Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to cover the Angular Material text area component. So an Angular Material text area works very much like an Angular plane input that we have implemented earlier on in the course. So the text area, the big difference is that it's meant to edit much bigger text, such as, for example, a long description, while the material input component is meant to edit, for example, something like a course title, so a much smaller amount of text. The way that the text area component works is very similar to the material input. So in the case of this component, to add it here to our form, we also need to add here a material form field directive. Otherwise, your text area will not work. Inside the material form field directive, we need to add here a plain HTML element, which will be a text area. So this is not an Angular component, it's just plain HTML. But to this particular text area element, we need to add the material input directive. Otherwise, this will not work. This will not become an Angular material text area. It will simply remain a plain HTML text area. Let's add here also a placeholder to our text area. Let's say that this is the long form description of our course creation form. And let's also link this form field to the form property. So if we check here our component that is linked here to the template that we were editing, we can see that we have here the definition of a reactive form. And here at the bottom, we have a long description field. So this is the field that we want to edit using the text area. So in order to link these two things together, we need to apply here, as usual, the form control name directive. And we need to link this to the long description property. This way, this text area is going to be editing this form property. And with this, our text area is ready to be used. We are going to talk about some useful properties of the text area component. Right now, let's just see what it looks like here on the screen. So as we can see, we have here the description form. We can see that whenever we click on it, we can resize it via a plain HTML resize button. And we can also see that the look and feel of the description box is a little bit different to what the user might be used to in other HTML forms. So if you want to make this look a bit more like a text area, you can go back here to our uh, template and we are going to be adding here on the material form field the property appearance and we're going to set this to outline. So if we try this out, we're going to see that now the text area looks much more like we are used to seeing in other HTML forms. We can still resize it, so this is very convenient. However, there are certain situations where we want to control the height of the text area. Controlling the height of the text area can be done with plain CSS, of course, but there is a better way. You can specify here the number of text rows that you want to display to the user, and you might also want to resize the text area automatically depending on the size of the text that it contains. Let's start by adding a lot of text here to this text area just to see how it displays now. So let's go back here to our component and let's create here a constant at the level of our component class. Let's call this, for example, sample text. And I'm going to paste in here a long text string that I have grabbed here from the internet. So this is the typical lorem ipsum string. And let's now apply this here to our form. Just as an example, we are going to set this to the initial value of the field. If we now try to see what this text looks like here on the screen, we're going to be surprised to see that no text is showing. And if we inspect here the console, we are going to find out that there is an error that has occurred here. No value accessor for form control with name long description. Now, I wanted to show you this error because this is a very common error that you're going to find with the material input and with other form fields. So this has to do, going back here to our code, with the placement of the form control name directive. So by mistake, I have applied here form control name to the material form field. But in the particular case of text areas, as well as form inputs, you need to apply form control name to the level of the HTML element. 
So as you can see, form control name or any other reactive form directive needs to always be applied to the component itself and never to the material form field directive. So if we now try this out, we are going to see that we get here a lot of text that is getting displayed here in our text area. And if we resize it, we are going to be able to see it all. But this is not very convenient to the user. So in the case when we have a lot of text, we might want to automatically resize here the text area in order to display all the text. You might also want to control the number of text lines that are being displayed here on the form. So you might want to make sure that at least two or three lines are getting displayed, but not more. And you might want to also control the maximum number amount of text lines that you want to display here on the form as well. And then after that, the user will have to scroll. So let's see how can we control the content of the text area without using plain CSS. So if we want to make sure that the text area will auto resize depending on the content of the text, we can apply the CDK text area auto size directive. Let's have a look at this directive in action. So as we can see, when we open here the form, we no longer have here the resize icon, but instead the height has been automatically adjusted to the content of the text area. So this is very convenient, but sometimes you might have here a lot of text and you only want to show to the user maybe three or four lines, for example. You can also control this in the following way. Switching back here to our template, next to this directive, you have a couple of other companion directives. And in this case, we have the CDK auto size min rows directive. So we are going to say that we want a minimum of two rows associated to this text area. And in a very similar way, we also have the CDK max rows directive. So we are going to pass in here the maximum number of rows that we want to show to the user. In this case, let's say, for example, five rows. If we now try this out, we are going to notice that our form here has a maximum of five rows. And if the user wants to see the rest, the user will have to scroll down. So as we can see, this is a very convenient way of limiting the height of the text area without having to use plain CSS, even though that is always an option if necessary. So with this, we have covered the most useful features of the Angular Material text area. Let's now talk about some other very commonly used components, such as, for example, Angular Material tooltips. This is useful for highlight certain information in our form controls or in other parts of our form. After that, we're going to move on to Angular Material data tables.